that the number of infections in Africa are slowly beginning to approach the 100,000 mark. Now, many countries are taking small steps to try and reopen their economies. South Africa is, of course, struggling to feed the thousands of mines that are grappling with restrictions. And also another nation, Burundi, is bracing for general elections, pretty much completely downplaying the pandemic fear altogether. Our next report gets you more. Food aid for millions to vote or not to vote, and should companies reopen? These dilemmas are occupying African governments as coronavirus figures continue to climb. There are no easy answers. Echoing scenes elsewhere, huge numbers of people queued up in South Africa to receive much-needed food handouts. Countless people have been unable to work during the country's particularly strict lockdown. Huge lines formed in the informal settlement of Itarileng in the capital Pretoria. President Cyril Ramaphosa announced last week that the country would ease restrictions from June. In line with restrictions, South Africa's mining industry is operating at only 50% capacity. It's an unpopular measure for company bosses and employees. Some workers in Marikana, northwest of Johannesburg, where police shot dead 34 strikers in 2012, have been paid but haven't been called in for shift duty. My biggest thing is, is that uh, maybe I will get a call. I don't know, maybe next week I will get a call. When I get there at work, they, they grow me the papers and I sign the, the retrenchment or uh, the exit. I don't know what is it. Despite the coronavirus outbreak, Burundians headed to the polls to vote in tense elections to replace their long-ruling president. The election comes after five years of turmoil sparked by President Pierre Nkurunziza's bid for a third term, which unleashed unrest that left at least 1,200 people dead and saw 400,000 flee the country. While Ethiopia postponed its elections as a result of the pandemic, Burundi pushed ahead and has largely downplayed the virus. The population of an estimated 11 million people have not had any restrictions on movement, unlike in neighbouring countries. Results are expected in a few days. What I ask of the election winner is that they unite the Burundians and create jobs, because if a country provides jobs, people live there in peace and security. Tanzanian President John Magafuli says that the number of coronavirus cases has dropped drastically thanks to the population's prayers and implies the pandemic might soon end. Although it has closed schools, the government has allowed shops and transportation networks to function as normal. Magafuli's government has been criticised for a lack of transparency regarding the toll that COVID-19 has taken, with the last official update at the end of April listing 480 cases, including 16 deaths. The battle against COVID-19 isn't just a physical one. It also means tackling the stigma associated with the illness and changing people's perceptions about those who are infected. Cameroonian politician Ekan Aniset has spoken out about overcoming the disease. The fact that someone who had COVID-19 can talk about it without painting an entirely negative picture has certainly had an impact on this panic and stigmatization. Anisette is using social media to demystify the virus and is now the head of an association for people who have contracted COVID-19.